Ownership is an integral part of team working. The most positive thing any team can have is trust. If you believe that your team will carry out their responsibilities to the best of their ability and take ownership, then I believe you have the basis of a great team. Skills can be taught and acquired, but attitude cannot be bought. Now, with that, I'd like to introduce somebody who has a lot of experience in, in growing teams. Um, I'd like to introduce Aaron Meller and Nigel Holliday of Tokyo Industries, which owns and runs 32 of the UK's coolest bars, clubs and festivals. Thank you. Uh, hello, I'm Nigel Holliday, Business Development Director, Tokyo Industries. Uh, thank you very much, obviously, coming to Beer, Keller and Brew House. Hopefully, lots of you have been here before. Um, first of all, we've just done a little video just to sort of give you a bit of an intro to Tokyo Industries and what we do. Okay, that was a little taster of what we do around the country. Um, currently operate 32 sites um, from Brighton up to Newcastle. Um, we're second, the second largest club operator in Europe. Um, we've been in Bradford since uh, 2007, um, so just short of 10 years really. Um, we first took the building up the road and um, as, a, as a lease in, in 2007, just before the recession bit. Um, it seemed like really great terms at the time, but in 2008, the kind of tide had changed. So then we, we were on a rent escalator, which was just going up and up and up. Um, when the landlord of the entire street kind of collapsed, we then bought the building out of, out of administration, and then we were left with a number of sites that we had to kind of reactivate. Currently, we've got 1,200 employees across the UK, as Aaron said, sort of stretching Newcastle down to Brighton and across sort of the M62 corridor. And um, yeah, obviously we've Shiraz in, inviting us to obviously speak today. He's sort of wanted to give us a bit of an idea of what we've done as a company and the current sort of challenges that we face and uh, how as a company over the years we've adapted and broadened our offering. Um, when we first started out, we were very much a nightclub orientated company. Uh, all the sites we owned were nightclubs. Over the period of time, through a number of different changes, licensing, deregulation, and many other things, 
the word nightclub seems to almost become a dirty word in 2016. So we've had to kind of try and recalibrate what our business model is. So sites like this, which would have typically been pure late night leisure, uh, are now trading throughout the day. So we open here at 11 a.m. in the morning and we don't close until 2 or 3 a.m. the following morning. And it's important when you're operating multiple sites in one city that you don't cannibalize your own trade. So we've got four very different operations here, all geared towards different demographics for each site. Over the years, we've very proud to have picked up quite a number of different awards. Um, obviously, from design awards, we've obviously the fit outs, um, through to obviously the restaurant bar design awards for a couple of recent projects. One in the cut in Newcastle recently won, and uh, we came runner up uh, last year with Get Baked, which is a burger, uh, dirty burger joint in Leeds, which we'll talk about later. And uh, currently, the couple of awards uh, that we're really proud of recently was. Uh, Lost Village Festival, which we'll show you some slides of. Uh, we won Best Promoter last year with that one. And Digital in Newcastle this year uh, got voted 31st best club in the entire world. Uh, so we were fifth best in the UK. Uh, and considering the venue's been there and open 10 years, uh, without any major refurbs, um, you know, it's still impressive to be uh, getting voted such awards after such a long time. Uh, and the last uh, award we just picked up uh, last week uh, is for Bradford for Brew House Upstairs, uh, which we won Best Pub in West Yorkshire. Um, you know, and considering how many amazing pubs and bars there is uh, in West Yorkshire, that was a great honour. And we go through to London in a couple of weeks' time to find out how we fare against the rest of the country. Um, so about leadership and kind of teamwork and how we kind of build these things forward. Um, it's, it's vital when you're operating a, a, a company the size of ours that you, you've got really strong management and that management and kind of, is not just about the managers, it's about the entire team. So every person in the business kind of working together to try and drive things forward. Um, you, in different cities, you get different challenges. Bradford's probably one of the hardest challenges we've got. Uh, the image of Bradford, as seen from outside Bradford, has always been hard to kind of overcome. And it's really vital that kind of not only ourselves as operators, but also everybody in the city kind of believes in that kind of forward vision. I believe the future of Bradford and the future of all these businesses in Bradford is about all of us working together, pulling it together and kind of driving things forward. That in many terms will take a lot of small steps, but I do believe there's kind of a wind of change and we're kind of getting there at the moment. I think pushing that forward is a great thing. Yeah, I think uh, one thing we always try and do is work sort of very hard with our partnerships, really. So uh, Bradford University, we've uh, obviously hosted a couple of their events here. And again, when all the students arrive, we've done bike bar crawls, which have obviously given the new students a, a bit of a sort of guided tour around sort of the better establishments up near the uni. And then obviously we've ended up at our Circle Nightclub, uh, which again is a great introduction to the students, to the new uh, city that they're living in. So what we've uh, really tried to do again with the beer keller concept is really trying to bring the fun back as well. I think uh, things got a little bit too serious and I think people on the night out, you know, got a little bit too preoccupied about how they looked and how the hair was and what jacket they had on as such. And, you know, I think now I think there's a bit of a revival of people actually just wanting to go let the hair down, dance on the benches and just have a really good fun time. And with the beer kellers here and if any of you experienced it on an evening, I think that hopefully is something that we do deliver in. You know, it's building on the teams and really encouraging all the staff to get fully involved with that. You know, here, the literally, you know, we were more excited seeing the staff jumping up and, you know, linking arms with the customers in here, um, you know, more so than necessarily how quickly they can empty that, uh, tidy that glass. And then it's about a state of evolution, really. So uh, as I spoke about earlier, that nightclubs are finding it harder and harder. We've kind of um, di diversified in what we're doing. So... I'm not really, I've never have been a believer of kind of cookie cutter rollouts whereby you kind of have a, a nightclub in Rotherham that's exactly the same as a nightclub in Edinburgh and there's a rollout of a chain. So each of our businesses tends to be quite unique and quite different. Uh, we haven't got any really big branded kind of outlets within our estate. Um, some of the newer concepts we've introduced, um, we've introduced a concept called Lewis Liquor Store in Huddersfield. This is in the basement of the old cellar of the, the venue we had there and it's very much a, an underground speakeasy with over a thousand different um, spirit lines in there and over 200 different bourbons, which is the, the biggest selection of bourbon in the north of England. Uh, um, get a bait we've got in Leeds, uh, which obviously, as I mentioned, we won an award for. Um, that's obviously a dirty burger joint, which is just touching on Leeds University campus uh, and very close to the Leeds Beckett University as well. Um, so that's uh, obviously in a yeah, so 1700, I think the church was originally built, and uh, yeah, we've got an amazing uh, restaurant in there. And obviously, Brew House, um, as uh, you'll experience when we go upstairs in Beer Keller. Another thing we've tried to introduce is trying to get um, a sense of 
local communities all kind of working together. So we've done this by a series of what we call night markets, which are kind of a, a rethink of what a, an indoor market would be. It's very much um, aimed at kind of the artisan kind of maker's market type thing. So trying to get encourage local startup businesses to take a stall. We don't charge for the stall. It's about trying to get like-minded creative people back into an environment. And you know, our game from that is we're trying to pull the community together and also try and get fresh faces into our venues that may or may not come into the venue if if it wasn't for doing something like that. So it's more of an arts and craft kind of uh, meets with street food and uh, music festivals. And I think it leads on, you know, people who've been to our night markets and things, you know, we've got tattoo conventions from it. We've had different barbers in, all doing this sort of fancy uh, beard cutting and wet shaves and, and various bits, you know, and they're all, again, lead to new customers seeing the venue to then obviously expand and want to do their own events and um, parties there. Um, and then to the kind of the almost the, the opposite end of what we do, um, these are kind of pop-up kind of um, warehouse events and kind of pop-up festivals in strange spaces that you wouldn't accept them. Um, the first one we did was the, the motor warehouse parties. These were designed to kind of do large format spaces. So the motor warehouse party is two and a half thousand um, with our business partners who run uh, motor black, uh, J Mo and Andy George from Radio One. Um, they were really about trying to put on a big kind of festival experience in kind of, a, well, this one was actually in a metal cow shed in the middle of a Lincoln field. Um, but it was really kind of putting it back, trying to get nightclubs and music back underground and feeling like it was a really creative movement again. And with those as well, we started doing a couple of day parties, you know, with some of the DJ fees, even when you've got a building that can hold two and a half thousand people, sometimes you can really struggle to obviously be able to get enough income to pay for the bigger DJs. So in Lincoln, we uh, did one which obviously opened at like lunchtime and actually closed at 10 at night, just so we could get the big DJ talent to play in the afternoon, where they would go down to London or further south and obviously pick up the bigger fees that we couldn't afford to pay um, and you know in New Lincoln people have followed you know and, and happy to you know really change the times that they went out and obviously had a full day experience rather than it being a let's say a nighttime orientated event. Um, after a series of kind of the warehouse parties we did and then some, so some work we did with the Hacienda doing an underground car park there um, we moved on and escalated that and took that to the next level really so Lost Village was its first year last year which was 15,000 people over a three-day Maybank holiday weekend. We're at year two this year, which uh, happens this Maybank holiday weekend. Um, and again, that's but we're nominated for umpteen festival awards. Interestingly, we spent as much money on talent as we did on, uh, sorry, as much money on the creative arts side of things as we did on talent for that festival, which is quite unique in, in the UK. There's other people like Glastonbury and Coachella in the US kind of concentrating that much on the kind of the artistic side of things and the kind of the boutique kind of craft side. And we found, you know, Lost Village, it's obviously an amazing site. Obviously, we have different stages dotted in the middle of the forest, and you enter the festival walking by a lake. But we also find it's brilliant for all our young junior managers. So that weekend, all the deputy managers of all the sites in the UK, they'll all obviously come down to Lost Village. We usually take the best supervisors and best staff, and they all come and work all weekend. And down at Lost Village this year, we've got 16 different bars. So different uh, managers or different supervisors will get responsibility looking after different different areas of the festival you know it's a great experience you know they're all absolutely knackered after sort of working day and night for three days but um, every single one of them is all like begging to be able to go back this year so I think it's again great to develop and um, I think you know they show great leadership when they've obviously taken some of their best staff and uh, lead the way with how to operate the different areas This is the lineup for this year where Fatboy Slim, uh, one of the headliners on the main stage. There's some different images uh, of the different stages. We obviously encourage people to sort of form different tribes, so you'd find a lot of the uh, customers would come dressed up in different colours and um, obviously create their own little tribes for the event. And then, uh, yeah, as again, we've our broadening our offer, as Aaron said earlier, we really want to sort of encourage new people into the businesses in Bradford. Um, there's some great beer festivals in the area, and obviously we wanted to sort of put our mark on it and show what we can do. Um, obviously, we had 40 different ales, you know, from sort of local breweries, as well as uh, a wider selection from the UK. And again, we had some great local acts and bands on performing down here, um, whilst the, obviously the, all the ales were upstairs. Um, and it's our first one, and as I say, it was great success, and we're looking forward to uh, obviously coming back next year with it on the same weekend at the obviously, uh, start of May. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, has anyone got any questions?
Yes, definitely. I mean, that's something we're really positive about encouraging and trying to get more of that going. Um, we've got a great space both down here and upstairs where we can put live music on. And that's something we're really keen to kind of push forward. Our next wave is trying to get encourage local bands to kind of try and take ownership of the space and put, put live nights on themselves. So 100% yes. It's uh, constantly evolving. I mean, the, the problem with festivals is that there's such high risk and low reward and they're so tremendously difficult. Regulations on us these days in terms of licensing, occupancy and everything else, it, it's, there's so much work that goes into it and the talent demands that we're, not, we're no longer competing with other festivals in the UK, we're competing with festivals around the world. So our biggest issue in the UK is that we're, we're constantly trying to compete with Vegas. So trying to bring heavyweight talent back into the UK is so difficult. So on average, a rule of thumb is that your ticket price for a festival, around 120% of your, your entire door money is spent on the talent and, and the, the production of the event. So the profit that you've got in running these festivals is very much about how you manage the bars, how you run the bars, and the teamwork that kind of builds around that infrastructure. So yeah, the, there's, there's been a saturation of festivals and there's been perhaps an oversubscription of them, of people running to them thinking that they were the easiest model to, to run towards. As general nightclubs in general have kind of tapered off a little bit. People are now seeing festivals as a, as a, a reinvention, really, of, a, of the nightclub. So rather than going to a nightclub every Saturday, they're, they're saving up for two months and going to a festival and having a, a great three-day party. But yeah, by nature of everyone trying to do it all at once, there has been some casualties. Yeah, the Sunbridge Wells stuff looks really good. Um, I mean, it looks fantastic. You know, I think it's vital um, that everyone in Bradford kind of sticks together and kind of tries to fly that flag universally. What we were really surprised about when we came back and reinvented these spaces was that we got ourselves in, in Bradford. This used to be the kind of the main late night leisure part of Bradford. And we, we had just the end unit, which was the old Tokyo at the top. Uh, as as uh, you know, over the period of seven years, all the big corporates kind of fell over. So the walkabout went, the varsity went, the revolution then went. And we found that then people were just switching off from Bradford. So it, it's very dangerous to be the last man in a town. So you can't be that one person. You've got to you've got to do that entire infrastructure. So then we were kind of faced with these empty units about what to do. And we had to try and reinvigorate this part of town, which is is quite a feat, really, and quite, you know, probably the most ambitious thing we've ever done. Um, Bradford Council got really behind us and we, we, we benefited from investing in Bradford Grant, which was, you know, it, it, it didn't finance the thing, but it kind of de-risked a little element of it that kind of gave us the motive to kind of push on and, and do the, the big wholesale development. What we also found when doing that was that the bars at the other side of town were all, going, all really supportive of what we were doing. So we were tweeting things and they were tweeting us back and it's like, it's, you're kind of building up a network internally and it's, that's, that's the vital thing for Bradford and, and events like this that people sit together with a collective voice and the spirit of trying to make Bradford back on the map and trying to reinvent the wheel a little bit. And nothing locally, we need to get these four established. Trying to do four separate concepts in a city at one point in time is is a vertical challenge, honestly. You know, we're, we're, you know, we're still kind of debugging this, really, so I want to try and get these four operating absolutely pristine. Um, and we're doing really well with that. We're just, it's just a case of you've got to... It's a, it's a slow burn process, really, to kind of change people's word of mouth, and that's best done by word of mouth. So people come for some food, they have great food upstairs, they come down here and they're not expecting it, and they have a great party, and they go away, they tell their friends, and that word of mouth is the thing that kind of reciprocates and builds things.